Welcome to this brief overview and demonstration of Informatica B2B Data Exchange. Today we're going to explore how Data Exchange could be used to streamline the process of exchanging data in a variety of different formats with your external business partners. Organizations today need to be able to support a variety of complex processes and various formats as well as different communication protocols when it comes to B2B integration. This includes support for traditional B2B patterns that have been in place for many years, things like EDI and other well-defined industry standards, uh, but it also includes support for the next generation of B2B interactions. So before we begin with this demonstration, I'd like to take a moment to introduce the components that make up data exchange and how it's uniquely positioned to address both the traditional B2B patterns as well as the next generation of B2B interactions. So the first component is data integration. Um, and this is simply referring to the underlying power center or Informatica Intelligent Cloud Services workflow uh, that's powering the data exchange. Next is data transformation. Um, and this layer sits on top of the data integration workflow and acts as the translator or the transformation engine that's parsing and generating various different data formats required for B2B integrations. Data Exchange also provides integrated managed file transfer for secure and auditable file exchange, um, allowing you to act as either a host or as a client across uh, a variety of the most common communication protocols. Now I'll discuss the remaining three components together as they're the primary focus of today's demonstration. Uh, they refer to the onboarding, management, as well as a monitoring of trading partners. And this is typically going to be performed by uh, the data exchange operator. And you could think of this as a business user. You know, and this is contrary to the first three components, uh, which are typically uh, IT or developer facing. Now, data exchange is going to empower your IT organization to define reusable processes and reusable transformations and then allow business users to configure and implement these processes in the top three components that you see on your screen. Dynamic trading partner management lets both your internal business users as well as your external trading partners create, edit, and manage partner profiles that define the specific data flows to be followed for that partner. So last, you have the option to leverage other aspects of the Informatica platform directly within your data exchange workflows. Uh, some examples of this might be adding downstream data quality or data masking rules uh, right within that data exchange flow. So for today's demonstration, I'll be taking on the role of a data exchange operator, that business user who's responsible for onboarding new trading partners. And while the operator may have subject matter expertise in a particular data format like EDI, um, this is not a developer. We're picking up the process after the initial workflow and transformation development has already been completed by IT and exposed to us, the business users, through the profiles. Um, so let's go ahead and jump into the product. So here you can see I've just logged in to the data exchange operation console. I'm greeted with a dashboard where I can get a snapshot view of my data exchange environment. I'm going to go ahead and navigate over to the onboarding checklist that we looked at. And you can see that I've already begun to uh, start the process for onboarding our new paper supplier, Dunder Mifflin. The next step for me is to create profile definitions for the inbound and outbound workflows that will be running for the EDI that we plan to exchange with Dunder Mifflin. When I navigate to the profile section, I can select the uh, inbound profile for Dunder Mifflin. And I'll just go ahead and remind you that the, the purpose of this profile is to, to define for a given partner uh, which workflow we'd like to associate and run for this definition. Um, in this case, we're leveraging one of the pre-built out-of-the-box workflows we provide with our accelerator for EDI X12. So we can see here that I have the ability to define some general information related to um, the EDI messages that we'll exchange, like whether or not I want to receive acknowledgments for purchase orders, generate 997 acknowledgments. Since I've already defined the basic information here, I'll go ahead and navigate out of the inbound profile um, and allow us to take a look at an outbound profile. In the case of the outbound workflow, uh, many of the parameters uh, that I wish to define here at the profile level, I'd actually like to expose to Dunder Mifflin and allow them to have self-service access through the partner portal to be able to configure those details themselves. So before I switch hats and take a look over at the self-service partner portal, I do want to take a few minutes uh, to drill into the event list here within the data exchange console 
Um, and this is the primary place we go for uh, monitoring. Um, so we can see you know, a large list of events here. Uh, if we want to drill into some of the details, uh, I can click on this event and I can actually begin to see some event details here as generated by that profile. So I could click here to download a copy of that uh, inbound 810 invoice. I can see that uh, not only do we have information captured at the ISA level, uh, but our EDI accelerator drills down to capture information uh, down to the group and transaction level as well. Um, so I could once again see a copy of the data here, um, as well as a copy of the uh, 997 acknowledgement that was generated uh, based on uh, the fact that I had that checked in my profile parameters. So let's go ahead and switch screens and switch roles and we'll go ahead and navigate to the partner portal and take a look from that side. So now I've navigated over to the data exchange partner portal. Remember, this is the site that we can expose to our trading partners to allow them external self-service access just to have visibility into their data exchange. So if I go ahead and log in, one of the things we can do here, like I spoke about, is actually customize our message profiles with any properties that have been enabled by the data exchange operator for you know, external intervention. If I go ahead and navigate to the profile we were just looking at, I can uh, check out the additional parameters section here, uh, where these are the parameters that I've decided to expose externally to Dunder Mifflin to fill out. Uh, what I've done is if I've taken some of the standard workflows uh, from our EDI accelerator that I spoke about, uh, and I've extended that out to also provide support for uh, the payment side of this interchange with Dunder Mifflin. So I've added some additional properties here, uh, whether or not they want to configure automatic payments. Um, and if so, if they'd like to also generate accompanying remittance advice, as well as a human readable receipt. Whatever. So based on the, that we have this checked, we see the options below here uh, to provide our bank information, account number, routing number, we also have access here to the um, EDI configuration details so I can define, uh, you know, specific to my organization. Um, so jumping out of the profile, um, let's also go ahead and take a look at uh, some of the events that are generated uh, from the partner portal side while we're here. On the monitoring events tab, we can give external access um, to see the events being exchanged with our organization. So if I dig into the event details, uh, based on the outbound profile that we just edited, I can see that since I selected to generate remittance advice as well as a human readable receipt, um, these events are able for me to view here within the partner portal as well as being sent to whatever EDI endpoint I have configured. Uh, so I could even take a little preview at the remittance advice as well as um, the human readable receipt, which is just uh, an HTML representation of the fund transfer that we have initiated here. If I drill into the event hierarchy, I can see that there are child events that have been generated because they have selected to also process um, electronic payments with this same workflow. So if I drill in here, we can see that in addition to the remittance advice generated for Dunder Mifflin, uh, we've generated an 820 payment order, as well as a, a wrapper for that payment order um, that succumbs to the NACHA format. Um, and I leverage both our uh, Informatica's libraries for EDIX12, as well as uh, for NACHA in order to generate uh, this output here, which is what we'll send to the bank. And that concludes this brief overview and demonstration of Informatica B2B Data Exchange. Thanks for watching.